Hi and welcome to the next video on uh, the Linux device drivers training. So I'm going to be mostly talking about um, you know how to build a module with uh, more than one C, C file in this particular video. Like so, from the last session, last video. So if you see, if you remember, so we had written uh, example zero two simple module init file and the example zero three simple module exit file. So these were modules with only the init function or only the exit function. So what I'm going to discuss in this particular video is so how do we combine multiple C files into a into a KO file. So I'm not going to be making any changes to the source code because this is only a make file change. So what we will do is we will take the example 02 and the example 03 files and combine them into a, a .ko file so which is going to be called as uh, let's say example 0203 simple module .ko. So Let's open the make file. So we're not going to make any changes to the C code. So I'm just going to put a rule saying obj and m colon equal to example zero two zero three simple module dot o. Remember that there is no source file called example zero two zero three simple module dot c. Hence, in order to help the build system identify the dependency for you know building the scale file. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this string and as it is that's basically our module name. I'm just going to paste it here and say for building this module the obj's that are required are you know effectively example 02 simple module underscore init dot o and example 03 simple module exit dot o. So uh, let's look at it again once more. So we have done a obj m colon equal to rule. So if you just go through this make file, so you know based on our discussion on the colon equal to and the plus equal to syntax, so what has effectively happened is on line number one, we had decided to build example zero one simple module dot ko, and in line number two we said in addition to example zero one also build zero two, and in line number three we said in addition to 1 and 2 also build 3 but since we have done a colon equal to on line number 5 so the previous list got reset and only the example 0203 simple module dot ko will be built however since there is no example 0203 simple module dot c file we have said that the obj files required for building example 0203 simple module comes from the example 02 module in it and the example 03 module exit. Okay. Now let's save this file and then try to compile it. So I'm going to run the make rule, make uh, a command here. So I'm just done a clean and then let's do make modules. Now, like you notice here, you would see that the example 02 simple module in it dot o was created. And then the example 03 simple module exit.o was created. And based on these two O files, example 0203 simple module.o was created. Now, from this example 0203 simple module.o, we finally got the example 0203 simple module.ko. If you look at this list of KO files that are generated, there's only one KO file which corresponds to example 0203 simple module.ko. Now let's try and load this module. So I'm going to do a sudo on tail minus f var log syslog to you know understand the print test that that's going to be displayed. I mean the print case that are going to be displayed. So I'm just going to open another terminal here and say sudo in smart example zero two zero three dot ko. Let's give the root password. And like you see there, so we saw our print inside 02 simple module in it. Remember that the module in it for 0203 simple module dot ko is coming from the 02 file. I mean the example 02 file, and the module exit is coming from the example 03 file. So when I do a sudo rm mod of, uh, and let's do one more thing. So let's do an ls mod and grep for example zero example. So we see that example 0203 simple module is loaded. When I do a sudo rm mod of example 0203, you would see the exit coming from the example 03 file. Okay. So 
just to summarize so this is how the make file looks so we have not done any changes to the C file so it's only a make file rule and uh, you know, as highlighted here so we have said that we want to build 0203.kvo from 0203.o which in turn comes from example 02.o and example 03.o okay so so I'm going to talking about um, you know one more topic in this video so let's do this so what I will do is so I'm just going to copy this uh, example 01 simple underscore module dot C as example 04 simple module dot C okay. now let's open this file simple module dot C and uh, what we will do is let's put a module license here so module license GPL okay now what this means is um, Linux as such is an open source operating system and the Linux is distributed in source code form so if you don't put this particular line module license so the kernel assumes that you have a proprietary license or a private license which means you are not willing to share the source code so for that reason so what you would see is when you load a module which is you know claiming that it doesn't want it doesn't support a, doesn't follow a particular GPL license and uh, you know which in turn means a proprietary license so you would see this print coming from the the module I mean, in, in response to the module loader so this basically means the module license is not specified and taint is your corrupting the kernel the sense you have probably loading some source code which is you know like which could break the functionality of the kernel or you're trying to hack onto the kernel so for that reason so specifying a module license is essential and, uh, and you would also notice that if you don't specify the module license uh, certain functionalities of the kernel will not be available to you like for example like it says here uh, disable lock debugging is you know lock debugging is disabled in the kernel in addition you would not have functionalities like the USB uh, support etc so you will not be able to write a driver when a USB client driver so because the USB core functionality will be disabled if you don't specify the module license okay so that's one point so you want to mention here that's module license GPL and the other topic that I want to discuss is the underscore underscore init keyword now remember that all these modules are basically loaded into the kernel space and they occupy you know some amount of RAM in the kernel space now based on our discussion the module init function is called only when the module is loaded into the kernel space that is insmod copies your module into the kernel space that's the kernel RAM location it does the linking with the kernel and then finally calls the module init function like so once the module init function is called I mean it is never going to be accessed for the duration the module is loaded in the kernel space that is the module init function is called only when insmod is executed and it's never going to be accessed after insmod returns right so by specifying an underscore underscore init keyword so what we are indicating is so this function is only required for the module to be initialized and once the module is initialized this function is not required to be present in the kernel RAM so eventually releasing some memory of the kernel RAM which can be used for some other purpose so if you have any data structures so uh, let's do one thing so remember that this is uh, you know we have just uh, uh, renamed the 01.c file as a 04.c file okay so I'm just going to make you know rename 01 as 04 and I'm also opening the example 1 file so like you notice here the only difference you would see between these two code is you know the presence of underscore underscore init keyword in the example 4 simple module.c file and the example 01 simple module.c does not have the underscore underscore init keyword now let's uh, see the difference of having this keyword like so I'm going to open the let's do a make clean first so that we can you know clean up our 
previous uh, .ko files. I'm going to open the make file and add a rule for building the obj m colon equal to example 04 simple module dot o and I'm also going to build obj m colon equal to example 01 simple module dot o okay so we'll build example 01 plus example 04 now when I execute the make command, you notice that we have two KO files created now. Okay, so I'm gonna load sudo insmod example 01.ko sudo insmod example 04.ko. Okay. Remember both these modules have exactly the same same source code except that the example 04 module has an underscore underscore in it keyword and now when we search for the list of modules loaded and when we scroll to the top to to the list of example modules that we have loaded so you would notice here so the first column is basically the module name that's loaded the second column is the size in bytes that is occupied in the kernel RAM and the last column is what are the other modules that are using this. Like you notice here the example 01 simple module has occupied approximately 12,536 bytes of kernel memory and example 04 simple module has occupied 12,468 bytes of kernel memory. So that's approximately we have reduced the kernel RAM size by 68 bytes. So just by specifying an underscore underscore init keyword in the module the and by removing the under the module init function from the kernel RAM once the module has been inserted we have saved approximately 68 bytes here. Okay. So you can also have uh, another keyword which is um, basically called for example I say and I want to put a variable called uh, uh, let's say int count is equal to zero something like this and I'm going to say int index is equal to zero and let's say for index is equal to zero to index less than count and index plus plus I'm just going to put a small print here. Okay, let's let's initialize count to a value of let's say five. Okay, print key. Can alert count equal to percentage t. And rather, let's say index equal to percentage d. And let's put the index here. So we have a loop here which is going to run count number of times that's effectively five times and you also notice that you know in this particular code count as a global variable is used only in the module init function now if you want to free up this the space occupied by the count variable after the module is initialized like the underscore underscore init keyword you have a keyword called underscore underscore init data so just to summarize again, so underscore underscore init is basically a keyword used for functions which do not need to be present in the kernel RAM once the module has been loaded and underscore underscore init data is for the variables that do not have to be in the kernel RAM once the module has been loaded and initialized. Okay. So now let's execute this. So I'm just going to build it here. So let's remove the previous instance of the module and insert it again. Okay, so you would see that example 4 is uh, loaded into the kernel space and uh, that still occupies 12468 uh, bytes of memory in spite of having a variable in the code and in spite of, a ha in spite of having a slightly bigger init function. That's because both the init variable and the init function got removed after the module was successfully loaded into the kernel space 
and after it was successfully initialized. And I would like to mention one more point here. So let's try and bring in uh, two functions. Let's call them example 04 simple module function 1 which doesn't take any parameters and int example 04 simple module function 2 which also doesn't take any parameters. So I'm just going to have these two functions you know print something. Okay. Now what we will do is so I'm going to call one of this function example 04 simple module function 1 in the module in it and uh, also call the second function simple underscore module underscore function 2 in the module in it and I'm going to be making a call to example 01 simple module function 2 alone in the module exit function. Now what I want you to understand is you can put an underscore underscore keyword to a function only if it is invoked from the module in it. I mean that is only if it is used during the initialization of the module. So if you consider these two functions, the module function 1 and the function 2, notice that function 1 is being used only in the module unit, module in it, which basically means function 1 is required only during the module initialization. So this naturally qualifies to have the underscore on it, in it keyword. However, function 2 is used in both the module in it function and module exit function. So this should not have an underscore underscore in it keyword. If you put an underscore underscore in it keyword to this function, so what effectively happens is the module function 2 gets removed from the RAM after the module has been initialized. So when you eventually try to remove the module and since the module exit code is also making a call to a function which is not present in the RAM now, it's going to result in a page fault and the kernel would crash. Okay. So just to repeat, so the underscore underscore init keyword can be put for all the functions that are used only during the module initialization and they would be removed after the module has been initialized. Okay. So I'm going to stop this video here and uh, we'll uh, again uh, discuss in the next video. Thank you.